I just finished watching The Social Network, rewatching it. I saw for the first time in 2010 when it came out with the writer Aaron Sorkin and the actor Army Hammer, who played the Winklevoss twins. I went to film school, and so we got access to some of the top Hollywood people and new screenings of films. And so I saw The Social Network when it came out with, with the writer. I don't know if Aaron Sorkin directed it as well and with Army Hammer. And then four years later, I pitched an idea to Jesse Eisenberg. And I'm going to share this story about pitching Jesse Eisenberg on a half-baked idea, a very half-baked idea, four years after The Social Network came out in which he played Mark Zuckerberg. And it's a very funny story, a very unexpected story. A few days ago, I tried turning this story into a script for TikTok. There was just too much going on. And I sat for an hour trying to write it down into a script. Couldn't do it. And I'm still working on that. I'm sure it'll come out on TikTok in the next month or two. But for now, I'm just going to share it on the podcast because it's a lot easier to give a complex story where I have room to speak rather than trying to condense it into 60 or 90 seconds for TikTok. So the social network, I see that in September 2010. And then four years later is when I pitched Jesse Eisenberg. It's really funny. I was, I was working in nightlife at the time. I was promoting for New York City nightclubs. And these are the type of places where I would be out and, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio would be there. I, Rihanna would have a table and I would be there with all these people. And at one of these places, I met this, this model. Her name was Bijou. And she really liked me. She invited me to the St. Regis Hotel. And the St. Regis Hotel is this posh, upscale, legendary hotel in Midtown. And I had no idea what to expect. I, I was just like, yeah, it'll be an adventure. Sure, why not? I'll come, I'll come out. And so I go meet Bijou, and she is crazy. I met her at this club called Tokyo. And when I, I meet her, and we, we talk for, I don't know, maybe five minutes. And then when I meet her at this hotel, she is insane. It's all over the place. Honestly, I, I, I'm not going to say her full name. I would describe her as a wannabe socialite and not actually a real model. That's, and I'm not saying that to be judgmental. That's actually the like, reality. But she had this friend come who was an actual model. And this guy, his name is Javon, super handsome dude, crazy cheekbones. And he's a real model. You can, you can just tell by looking at him. And he was so entitled. And he was so suave. And so I'm sitting with Bijou and Javon. And we're chatting at the King Cole Bar at the St. Regis Hotel, 2014. The ex exact date, I have this in my journal, was February 10th, 2014. And then Bijou goes to some other table to talk to some rich dudes. Like probably, you know, 100 millionaires or billionaires. Because those are the types of people you would meet at the St. Regis Hotel. She, so she goes to this table. It's so funny. And I'm talking with, with Javon. And we're starting to brainstorm ideas because media ideas because i had a string of viral videos on youtube around this time I, I say this on the show often i was an early viral video producer on youtube back when it wasn't as common as it is now to have videos that get millions of views 10 years ago it just really wasn't as common obviously it still happened all the time but just not to the extent that it does now a million views on a video is, is it's cool but it's not a big deal you get that on tiktok you get that on, on instagram reels you get that on youtube you know, I think part of it was there weren't as many streaming platforms in 2014 as there are now. Now there's so many streaming platforms and so many more people on the internet, so many people online. But I, I, this was unique about me. This, is, this thing that was unique about me was that I had these viral YouTube videos. So we're brainstorming media ideas. One of the things that we come up with, mostly me, was Twitch was starting to get popular around this time, if I remember. So we had this idea where celebrities would play video games for charity. And it was a half-baked idea. And we came up with it literally there at the King Cole Bar at the St. Regis Hotel. But the idea basically was gaming studios. And I, I did not have a lot of business experience at this time. I hadn't even really started learning search engine optimization or I, I had just started. I don't remember exactly. So I didn't know much about tech. I didn't know much about business. I never really pitched anyone on a real business idea. I pitched TV executives on video ideas, but never somebody on a real business idea. This is years before I would go and pitch a room full of some of like the wealthiest investors from China on a crypto gaming system, which is something I actually did. I, I went on after 
after Gary Gensler from the SEC. I, I literally spoke right after him. After I would pitch top VCs, which, is, which I've done. After I give crazy presentations at Microsoft. Years and years and years before all of that. But yeah, the idea is the, the gaming studios would pay celebrities to play their games. And there would be ads on the celebrities playing the games. And the ad revenue would go to charity. And so the celebrities get paid and they, get, and they play video games and charities get money. That was basically the half-baked idea. But honestly, it would, probably wasn't even that fleshed out at the time because I was so inept with business then. All right. So anyway, Javon and I, mostly me, we have this idea. And then Jesse Eisenberg walks into the King Cole bar. He gets a table off at the side and he sits down reading a book. We're like, oh, that's Jesse Eisenberg and Javon. And Javon, this is the craziest part of the whole story. So Jesse Eisenberg, four years before, played Mark Zuckerberg in the social network. And Javon, instead of calling him Jesse, starts yelling over to him from our table on the other side of the bar. And there are people around. And Javon, this striking male model, just doesn't care. And he's like, hey, Mark, Mark, yes, Mark. Mark, come over for a second. Mark, and he's gesturing Mark. He's gesturing Jesse Eisenberg to come over. Mark, he's yelling and calling him Mark. Even though he played Mark Zuckerberg, he's Jesse Eisenberg. Mark, and Jesse Eisenberg actually comes over. And instead of correcting Javon, and he's not, instead of being like, hey, my name is Jesse, not Mark, he's just like, what can I do for you? And Javon is like, we got to share this idea for this startup that we have. <laughs> <laughs> this idea that is like 10 minutes, 10 minutes old. And Javon starts pitching Jesse Eisenberg and he's doing a horrendous job. He is getting everything wrong. So I jump in and I'm like, no, 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 no. This is how, this is how it would work. And I do my, I do my best. I am not experienced. The idea is half baked. And Jesse Eisenberg is like, this is never going to work. I wrote down exactly in my journal what he said. It's really funny what I wrote. I wrote, Jesse brought up the important point of saying that money wouldn't be enough of an incentive for the celebrities to sit down with these games for a few days, something we hadn't considered. Then his guest came and he had to leave us. You know, it's kind of funny because I think two years later, all these paparazzi took pictures of Justin Bieber playing Pokemon Go. Years after that, Drake would go and stream playing video games with Ninja. Celebrities are normal people. They like playing video games like other people. I actually think this idea is not terrible. I was thinking how it could work now. But at the time, you know, I was, I was a kid, did not know how to pitch anything, not know how business worked. That was my chance. And that was my chance to pitch Mark Zuckerberg, to pitch Jesse Eisenberg. The, the biggest takeaway with this whole experience is how powerful entitlement is. That, I will say, is the biggest takeaway. Because Javon... When he yelled over to Jesse Eisenberg and called him Mark and then said, hey, sit down for a second, was so entitled. Honestly, Javon was kind of like the caricature, caricature of a male model portrayed in the movie Zoolander. If you've ever seen that movie, it has a lot of male models. It's a, it's a comedy movie. And the caricature of male models, you can just search Zoolander best scenes on YouTube and you'll see what I mean. And that's kind of what Javon was like. But it got Jesse Eisenberg over to our table. Something else that I wrote was Jesse was paying close attention. He was really listening. He was listening intently. And I think a lot of that is because Javon was so entitled. We were at the right place where Jesse didn't know who Javon was. And he was holding himself in a completely entitled way. And it's a really powerful thing. So believe in yourself. Believe in your worth. So many people undervalue themselves. And you'll have your shot at pitching Mark Zuckerberg someday. This is episode 197 of The Edward Show. This is my daily growth hack and growth marketing podcast. But it's also The Edward Show. And I share stories from my life, from Edward's life, from my life. This is one of them. It's snowing outside here in Poland. And it's a great day. It's a lovely day. I'm about to go to lunch with some guy who said he had the number one NFT collection on OpenSea. It's going to be an interesting lunch. Looking forward to this at a very nice restaurant here. And I will talk to all of you again tomorrow. 
Bye now.